Hi, I'm Bill Arnold. Thank you for listening to this podcast. There are many more podcasts available at MyFaithRadio.com. Your support makes this possible. Thank you. And a warm welcome to the afternoon show. I'm Bill Arnold. And when Dr. Glenn Pickering sends me a topic entitled Finding Peace in the Storm, boy, does that have my attention. I'm looking forward to having that discussion today. And whenever you hear something that's discussed in this hour with uh, Glenn, you can always text a comment or question over. I just want you to know that. And that number is 877-933-248. Eight, four, and I'm so glad God is always with us. And Glenn, I'm glad you're with us today as well. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, God is with us always, even in difficult situations. Oh, great. I'm going to start off here. I just had um, prostate cancer surgery a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and that's about as bad as it sounds. And I would say that was a very difficult situation. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm somewhere in the autism spectrum, which means I'm always kind of anxious. I have a background level of anxiety that's just kind of always there. And so it was almost time for surgery. I'm on this cold metal table with this thin little hospital gown. I'm about to get wheeled into surgery, which I know is going to be super painful. And my wife, Gwen, was standing next to me just before they wheeled me in. And the doctor said to Gwen and I, how are you guys doing? And we both looked at each other and we both felt like, wow. We really feel at peace. There's really something. Wow. And um, yes. And um, there are so many people who are praying for us. That it's like we could literally feel that we're being prayed for. Like we could literally feel God being present with us through them. And it was just amazing. So even in this difficult situation, I came out of that surgery, which I jokingly call, with five bullet holes and a knife wound. (laughs) <laughs> so I got five holes in my abdomen where they put in, you know, different instruments and et cetera, et cetera. So there are five round incisions and then one long slit right down the middle of my front. Yikes. Um, yes. Uh-huh. My, uh, I was over at my daughter's house and she said, Dad, can I see how your incisions look? Because it was a few days after the surgery. And I said, sure. And I showed her and she said, whoa. And my little granddaughter, was Isabel, was standing there. She said, Grandpa. Those look like really bad ouchies. <laughs> I, I said, yeah, they are. And then she turned away and she, and she said, but that's gross. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to admit that's true. <laughs> so, but even in that difficult time, I was able to feel peaceful because I just could really feel like God is really with me. So God is always with us, even in those situations where we would think, well, yeah, but the situation is terrible. Well, yeah, that wasn't a great situation, I got to say. But um, but we can be peaceful even then. And and we can feel God being with us even when it feels like he's not, which sounds counterintuitive. <laughs> but I just think if you read any of the Psalms, well, at least a vast majority of them, they start off like Psalm 13. It's like, God, how long will you be away from me? Or, you know. Have you forgotten me? Why are you hiding your face from me? I can't bear this pain in my soul. How long do I have to deal with this sorrow in my heart? I mean, here's a person literally crying out to God, like, God, I can't tell that you're with me. Right. And, you know, the Psalms aren't afraid to tell them the truth. That sometimes it doesn't feel like God is with us, and we don't have to be afraid of acknowledging that that can be true. But then the same psalm finishes with, but I've trusted in thy steadfast love. My heart will rejoice in my salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he will deal bountifully with me. And those are words of hope and reassurance and praise, even when it doesn't necessarily feel to us on that emotional level like God is actually there. And the psalms are there to reassure us. Yes, uh uh-huh, we're going to have those times, so we don't have to pretend we don't. But we just need to know that even in those times, God really is with us in a really, really powerful way that will lead to hope and reassurance and praise in the end. 
Great, great start, Glenn. This is uh, obviously difficult having you tell this uh, story about what's going on in your life, but I also appreciate the way that you're starting to connect amazing dots with Psalm 13. And this is how we often feel when we're in that um, mode of fear, anxiety. And I want to back up back to the metal gurney you were on with the thin little uh, (laughs) hospital (laughs) gown. Were you you feeling peace then? Or was it when the doctor said, how are you doing? No, the whole time, even when Gwen was driving me, because, you know, you have to have somebody drive you to the surgery. Even when Gwen was driving me to the surgery, both of us felt amazingly peaceful. Wow. Because there were people who started praying for us, like even a couple of days ahead of time. And um, it was just so clear. And it didn't mean the situation wasn't true. But sometimes people, I think, think praying to God means God's going to take away this terrible situation in front of me. But I think, no, it's that God can help with be at peace even in the middle of those storms. And, you know, when Jesus calms a storm, the, you know, him and the, he's asleep in the boat, the disciples are all getting petrified, water's coming over the, shore, over the boat mm-hmm. in Mark 4. And they're panicked, and they say, wake up, don't you care about us? And he said to them, oh, ye have little faith. And... um. I can't help but read that story and laugh every time. It's like, oh my gosh, I'm in a boat and the waves are coming over the side. Lord, that's yeah, that's kind of scary. And the more I think about the surgery, the more I think he wasn't saying, don't be scared. He's saying we should be able to have faith even while we're scared that God will in that process be with us in some powerful way. And um, I am kind of reread that passage a little differently this last week. I bet. And I, I love that you're saying this because what I'm hearing is you really mean it, and it's true. You're not saying this because this would make for good Christian radio. Right, exactly. I, I felt like I relearned or learned at a way deeper experiential level all the things I'm going to be talking about today. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and I think you're right. It's easy to just mull the words. And it's easy for people, if we're really struggling with something, to tell us, well, you know, like sort of, tell us somehow that it's wrong that we even feel anxious or that it shouldn't be that big of a deal or like crazy stuff like that. But the Psalms say, yeah, you're right. Some parts of life really are hard. That's really true. And sometimes God does feel far away. That's really true too. We don't have to hide that or fix it or pretend it's not true or tell each other some cliche that we shouldn't feel like that. Like, no, we need to just acknowledge, yeah, sometimes that's true. And that doesn't make us unchristian. <laughs> yeah. When the psalmist is pouring out, how long will you forget me and how long will you hide your face and bear pain in my soul? I know that God is allowing that scripture because he knows how men are when they're desperate. Right. Yeah. We get scared. We get worried. And oh, then a yeah. little ego, ego kicks in thinking, how am I going to fix this? But God's always like, well, actually, you and I... I'm going to fix it together if you're willing to be on my team. Whoa. And I think about, you know, that part about that God is with us even when it feels like it's not. And again, that passage in Hebrews 11 just rang a little more true to me this week where it talks about hope. We hope for that in which it, which is yet unseen. Hope is not hope for things we already have or already know. We hope literally for things that are yet unseen. And, um, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And I love those two words, assurance and conviction. Faith is the assurance, that God's assurance to us, it's going to be all right. And the conviction of things not seen, our conviction that even though this is a difficult situation, and or even though it feels to us like God's not with us, we need to stay convicted of the truth that, of course, God is with us, that, of course, God loves us, and, of course, God is always caring for us and is always with us, even in those times. Mm-hmm. When our little people think, oh, I got to take charge. I got to fix this thing. I, it's a panic situation. I got to take over. Our little ego kicks in and sort of pushes aside our spiritual self that knows perfectly well. Again, is, God is always with us and always will be with us, and that we can draw upon that strength and that courage at any time. Mm-hmm. Dr. Glenn, be, yeah, doc, go ahead. Dr. Glenn Pickering is my guest. You can learn more about him at drglennpickering.com. We're talking about finding peace in the storm. 
So maybe you're in the storm right now as well. And I know that what you're hearing from Glenn, who is just having gone through the storm himself, that God is always with us, even in difficult situations. And even when it feels like he's not paying attention, and that's a horrible feeling because we often want to see and understand and understand and not think about the uh, the uh, the assurance that we hope for or the conviction of things not seen. We like to see and understand. Yep. <laughs> I, um, I have a friend who says this powerful thing. He says, people always say, I'll believe it when I see it. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, really, I will see it when I believe it. I like that. If, you yeah, got smart friends. Of, yeah, instead of letting my ego be in control, to just sort of slow down and say, okay, I'm convicted that God is with me. I'm convicted that God cares for me. I'm going to start looking for signs that that's true. Then I will see those signs all around me. All right, Glenn. So, Let's let's move on a little bit. Now, God is always with us. That's a wonderful assurance. But what about, is he always guiding us? Yeah, I, I think this. This happened in the surgical process. So I went through a lot of tests to figure out, you know, if I had cancer, did I not? What was going on with my prostate? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, most prostate cancers are pretty slow growing. So, you know, if you get prostate cancer later in your life like me, Oh, I'm sorry. That's uh, that's my fault. Um, if you get prostate cancer like me, they might even tell you, well, we'll just watch it. We'll just keep an eye on it. Because you might very well die at 88 and still not die of that cancer because right. most prostate cancers are really slow growing. So we went through a series of tests, and that took a while. But by the time we got to the end of those tests, and it's the time to decide, should I just wait or should I get surgery? I was so clear. Not in a hyped up sort of way, just like a way deep inside knowing, no, we need to do this thing right now. So the, the surgeon said, okay, well, we can wait or we can do it now, whichever you want. I said, I want to get it done now. He said, okay, we can do it pretty soon or we can wait for a little while. And I'm like, no, I want to get it done now. And we scheduled it, once we got to that point, finally, we scheduled it pretty quickly after that. And um, once they opened me up and took that prostate out, they found I had a very, very malignant form of cancer that, that certainly would have killed me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Just think, now, how did I know that? And the answer is because God is always guiding us. Mm-hmm. That small voice that we hear about from Elijah in First Kings 19 is available to all of us all the time if we're willing to actually listen. My wife, Gwen, had this powerful experience back in 2004 when she went to Arizona to meet with this really, really great spiritual director. The spiritual director asked Gwen, Gwen, do you ever pray? And Gwen said, well, of course, I pray all the time. And her spiritual director said, okay, great. Do you ever listen? Hmm. Which kind of shook Gwen a little bit for a moment. (laughs) But it just really got her thinking, like, do I really spend time listening? I come before God with praise and with requests. Do I come before God to listen? And uh, she has really been very, very serious about that ever since, which I give her so much credit for. Because I just think, see, that still small voice is available to all of us all the time. And somebody asked me the other day, well, why did God put that on your heart, Gwen? I think God puts stuff on all of our hearts all the time. Like, this is a never-ending process. God is always guiding us. The question is, only am I willing to sort of slow down and pay attention to that part of me that knows things. Because God is our guiding us. All right, Glenn, we're going to take a little break. Dr. Glenn Pickering is our guest. You can learn more about him at his website, drglennpickering.com. We're talking today about finding peace in the storm. That God is not only always with us, but he's always guiding us. Isn't that a comforting thought? If you have a question or comment, you are so welcome to text it over, 877 877- Nine three three two four eight four. Hi, podcast listener. You know, I'm Bill Arnold, and my theme song says, What's for dinner? And like when I'm grilling, I'm paying really close attention. And I know that ideal second to get the food off the grill. 
Like all good and ideal timings in life, right now would be an ideal time to be a cheerful giver to Faith Radio. Give now to support this podcast so that more people in more places might come to saving faith in Jesus and grow in their relationship and become a fully devoted follower. Click the link in the show notes or give now at myfaithradio.com. My guest is Dr. Glenn Pickering. We're talking today about finding peace in the storm. Glenn has gone through um, an operation that was a little scary, and he uh, is talking about it and how he has been finding peace in the middle of that storm and giving us uh, some wonderful pieces of Scripture alongside the fact God is always with us and God is always guiding us and how important it is to be listening to the voice of God, which, Glenn, I think can be hard to do when you're nervous, when you're scared, and when you're on edge. Honestly, that's so true, because the adrenaline kicks in, and that adrenaline in the back of our head talks in a really loud voice. Yes, it does. It's not an accident that it says in First Kings, when God is talking to Elijah, or does talk to Elijah, that it says it's a still, small voice, that it's only in our stillness that we actually are able to hear that voice. And I think mm, sometimes people who get in situations that God's in, they're like, well, Glenn, I want to believe God is guiding me, but they have the, like, how can, how can I know that? And like, they have doubts. And again, you know, the Bible is really clear about that. It's nothing wrong with having questions. And one of the things I notice, I can find a lot of reassurance by paying attention to the miracles all around us. Years and years ago, I was going through a time when I really felt abandoned by everybody and by God. It was an incredible grieving time. And I really, I literally felt so alone. And I just happened to (laughs) hear this great preacher on the radio talking about how Sometimes when we're going through a really hard situation, we're so shrouded in grief and so overwhelmed by our awareness of our own grief that even though God and all kinds of people are trying to reach out to us and connect to us and care for us, we don't even see it. And so we feel alone. And he encouraged us all to carry on a journal and just notice all the times that people were trying to be helpful to us or care for us. And I'm not much of a journal guy, but I did start taking mental note. And honestly, every single day, there were like anywhere from 20 to 50 things. Wow. People smiling saw me, shake my hand and tell me it's glad to see me. People who don't even know me holding the door for me when I go in the quick trip store just so, um, because they see me and they recognize me. Friends calling me out of the blue said, Glenn, I don't know why, but I just felt like I was supposed to call you. Um, over and over and over again, it's like, wow. When we actually pay attention, really, truly, to that level, Instead of telling myself I'm alone, that nobody cares, that God's not really with me, or nobody in my life cares about me, if I just start paying attention to all the ways that people really are caring for us, reaching out for us, trying to be there for us, it is so reassuring. And I broadened that thinking now for the last little while, thinking, actually, so we can notice all the ways that God and people are trying to help us. But we can just pay attention to all the little miracles around us. How do I know that God is really always in everything? I think, wow, if we just paid attention to the everyday miracles around us, we've known that for sure. Those beautiful flowers that are blooming in my garden, the way the clouds are moving across the sky, the people who I'm able to help in that given day, the people who are helpful to me, that just the simple little silly joke that somebody told me that made me laugh and kind of broke my sadness. I mean, it's just over and over again. If we just pay attention to what's actually happening, we will actually help us be in the present instead of in our fearful future. And it will also be incredibly encouraging to us. And so we know, why do I know God is always guiding us? Because I can literally see God all around me. For me, that's an incredibly helpful thought. It is a helpful and, thought. But yeah. if, if you're drowning in anxiety, you may be completely oblivious to all of it. You may only see it in your rearview mirror. I think that's exactly right. That's so true. And so when that pastor said that on the radio, I realized, yep, that's exactly, exactly what he said. That's exactly what I was doing. 
And so what he did is he encouraged me because see, when I'm caught up in my anxiety, I'm literally not paying attention to anything that's happening around me. I'm so caught up in what's happening inside of me, my anxiety, that I'm literally not even taking in all the things that are happening outside of me and around me. And so what he was saying is, yeah, but if I decide to actually just notice, literally just start paying attention to the things and the people that are happening around me to shift my focus, I will notice that instead of feeling anxious, that I actually feel calmer and encouraged because that is always out there if I'm willing to pay attention. But you're right, it does require that I shift my attention. And even if I'm anxious, which I can get really anxious or fearful or grieving, I need to understand, yes, that's where I'm focused right now. But I don't have to be focused there. I can still choose, even in the midst of that, to focus on the things that are happening around me and to pay attention to the miracles that are happening around me. And Glenn, isn't it true that God's grace shows up in his perfect timing? Because if you're (laughs) drowning in anxiety, now you're on the metal gurney in the thin hospital gown and you're flooded with peace. And that's the exact time you needed it. Right. Uh, That's so perfectly true. I love that. Because you probably wanted all this peace well in advance of the surgery. You may have had it, but for many, they're they're stunned how in the moment uh, it shows up in a way that, that just kind of blows them away. And I go, yeah, that's how God works. Um, it's, it's just so like him in his perfect way, in his perfect timing to give you exactly what you need at the moment you need, you need it. Yep. So true. So God is always guiding us. And I noticed this too for myself and for the people I talk with. And so not God is not always guiding us. God is always guiding us in a very certain sort of direction. You know, so it says in Jeremiah 29, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, to give you hope and give you a future. And I think, right, God literally has a plan for our life, and it's a good one, a great one, an amazing one, a big abundant one. And so if we're willing to sort of slow down, Watch what's actually happening instead of letting us up get caught up in the chatter in our head, which we're going to all do some of the time. We're going to notice that, wow, things really are sort of unfolding in a very interesting way. But again, we have to stop and be able to sort of look and notice what's been happening in our life to sort of see, oh, things really are unfolding in a specific way. And if I quit getting myself all agitated and quit letting that adrenaline control me, and just pay attention when I know it's, wow, there really is a plan. And it really is step-by-step step being played out in my life. And so even in the hard times, and the times that seem terrible, I love how the Apostle Paul says in Romans 8, for in all things God works to bring about the good. And I think, right, even in those really difficult times, even in those times when I think, this is terrible, this is an awful time, so often, in that so-called awful time, God is still working to bring about something amazing in our life if we're willing to pay attention. Like from now on, because I went through that surgery experience, when people talk about the peace that passes all understanding, I'm gonna think, yep, I know what that means. Because I went through that experience. Because God took some took that situation and made something really, really great come out of that for me in a way that's just so perfect. Glenn and yeah. Getting that surgery date on the calendar, what did that do for your dependence on God and your prayer life? That's a really great question. Okay. It's interesting. I, as soon as I knew the date, I started to feel at peace. Because now instead of some vague thing going on, maybe I have cancer, maybe I don't, or maybe it's going to be bad, maybe not, maybe I'm going to get surgery, maybe not. To just think, yep, I'm getting it on the 26th. Okay. And then I could say I have a specific thing to start praying for. it. For me, that was actually kind of comforting to just know that's what we're going to do. And, um, and some of us, we put things off because we're sort of scared to make any decision. But what I notice is anytime we make a decision that's God-guided, we don't feel more anxious. We feel less anxious. So we put off a decision about things that make us anxious. But the truth is making a decision will make us less anxious. 
I, I was so struck by how true that was. I'm not sure the difference between a God guided thought and a non God guided thought. Yeah, I I think it's easy to not be sure about that. Okay. So I'm not I'm not trying to say I know that perfectly because I'm clear I don't. Okay. But my two guidelines for that are this. Any God-guided thought will bring me joy and peace because joy and peace are the two surest signs of God's presence. My own little chattering background voice will not bring me joy or peace. It brings me agitation or confusion or adrenaline or thinking I need to be in control of something, but it did not bring me joy or peace. Mm -hmm. But when I have a godly thought in my mind, it just feels like, oh, yeah, that's right. And I don't have to wonder if it's right because it just brings me a sense of joyfulness and peacefulness. And anytime I have that reaction, I know I must be on the godly path. Mm -hmm. Dr. Glenn Pickering is my guest. We are talking about finding peace in the storm. If that's where you're at right now, I want you to know we are standing with you. We want to be walking alongside um, helping, praying, giving you encouragement, inspiration. Glenn's got quite a story of uh, his own uh, resulting in a cancer surgery recently and finding incredible peace, knowing that God is with him and that God was guiding him. And Glenn, let's talk a little bit about uh, what God might be doing that's new. Um, maybe he's in the process of creating a new lane for you to be in as a result of this or a new life in a way. What What are your thoughts on that? I, I love that thought, and I think it's so true. I feel like God is always saying this one thing to all of us. So I'll use my name, Glenn, but God says, tells each one of us and says the same thing. I'm trying to create an amazing new life for you, starting from where you are right now. Are you coming? So when Jesus starts out in Mark 1, 14, and says, you know, for behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. I mean, it's right here in front of us right now. Turn like shift your life 180 degrees and believe in the good news. And the good news is that God is always saying to this to us, I'm trying to create an amazing new life for you, starting from where you are right now. Are you coming? Now, um, so then when Jesus says in Luke 9, no one who puts their hand in the plow and looks backwards is fit for the kingdom. I used to hear that as sort of harsh or judgmental. But now I just really understand. See, God is saying to me every minute, Glenn, I'm trying to create an amazing new life for you, starting from where you are right now. Are you coming? Oh, but back there, this happened. I can never do this right. I always screw that up whenever I try so often in the past. That never worked for me. See, the answer, if I'm thinking about all that stuff, the answer to God's question, are you coming, is no, I'm not. So, um, we need to understand that God has always given that opportunity. And even if today I respond very poorly to the question, Glenn, are you coming? Then tomorrow the question God has for me is exactly the same question. Glenn, I'm trying to create an amazing new life for you, starting from where you are right now. Are you coming? Now, I think it's interesting to me that in Luke 9, 62, right after Jesus says that, then he sends out the disciples two by two. See, because otherwise they would doubt the mission. They would think, oh, how can I do that? Because remember, all the people he picked as disciples were guys who failed to make the cut previously. You know, all the kids would study the scriptures. They'd memorize the Old Testament until they were 14. And then the ones who were really, really, really good got to be attached to a rabbi and follow the rabbi around until they could become a rabbi. But the people that didn't make the cut, then they just went back to work probably for their dad, working probably in their dad's same business. And Jesus did go and call his disciples, all of whom were working for their dad, in their dad's business. See, these are all people who failed to make the cut. So their first reaction to Jesus could have been, oh, yeah, but no, I didn't make the cut back then. I'm not good enough. I'm, all I can do is go fishing. But Jesus said, no, you don't get it. I am calling to you to an amazing new life. Are you coming? And once they got that and said yes, then he sends them out. Because they couldn't have even accepted that mission. Until he said yes. Because we can't look back. Because our mission is not behind us. Our mission is in front of us. So we just need to understand, even in our darkest times, God really is always guiding us, always leading us forward, always working with us to create that amazing new life that he can see perfectly well that we could have. 
All right, let me take a little break. We'll be back talking to Dr. Glenn Pickering, Finding Peace in the Storm. God is always with us. God is always guiding us. And we're going to continue our discussion. If you have a question or comment, you're always welcome. 877-933-2484. Be right back. It's the Afternoon Show with Bill Arno. Drive time, drive time. Let's get it started. Jump in your car. Yeah. What's for dinner? Hey. It's the Afternoon Show with Bill Arno. Welcome to the show. I've got Dr. Glenn Pickering as my guest today. We're, our topic is finding peace in the storm. Uh, Glenn recently had an encounter with uh, Mr. Dr. Scalpel. And had some surgery and found uh, that there was some cancer and it got removed. And he found incredible uh, peace in the storm. And he said God was with him. God was guiding him. And now, Glenn, I want to talk about how God was in the process and maybe not necessarily the outcome. Talk about that. Great. Thank you. I um, I think that's a lot. We often ask questions. We pray for certain outcomes. God, please make this happen or please make that happen. And it's not like God is unwilling. But I just think we need to understand, mostly, God is in the process, and his interest in the process, not the outcome. And here's what I mean. Anytime we ask for strength, God gives us strength. Every time we ask for courage, God will give us courage. In fact, if I'm anxious, and I just slow down, (coughs) excuse me, and I just perfectly ask God, help me be calm, help me be clear, help me be in your presence, I'm already calmer. Now, <clears throat> the day after I think I got home from the hospital, you know, they tell you, so I was in the hospital for one day, then you go home. I'm mean, whacked with pain. I mean, literally moving her, standing up to walk, which they said you have to walk, but you have to do it a bunch so you don't get blood clots in your leg. Okay. Because even if the surgery doesn't kill you, those blood clots could. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I think it was the second day after I got home. I knew I needed to get up and walk. And I knew, I knew what was going to hurt like crazy. Like, like, like make you want to scream. It hurt so bad. And I was asking Gwen to help me out because I couldn't do it by myself. And she was willing because she'd been, she was such a great support to me in that process. It was really amazing. And I said, as I was trying to get up and I prayed for God for the strength to do it. I said to Gwen, this is an act of courage. And she said, no, it's an act of discipline. And I thought, that's so right. And I just think, it's just so clear in my mind at that moment, discipline is the will to do the thing that we know to be the right thing, even though it's not the easy thing. And God gives us the strength and the discipline to make those choices, even in difficult situations, even if it feels like God's not with us, because God really is always in that process with us. And so as soon as she said that, I thought, that's right. Um, and so I got up and I did, I was racked with pain. It was horrible. But on some level, I was okay with that in a whole different way. Instead of fighting the pain or hating the pain, I thought, right, I'm going to get up and walk despite the pain. Because God gives us the discipline to do that, the will to do the thing that we know is in our long-term best interest, even if it's not the easiest thing to do in the moment. And when I talk about God being in the process, that's kind of what I mean, that God gives us the strength or the courage or the discipline to do that thing that we know he's calling us to do, even if it's hard to do it. All right, that is uh, well said, and I I appreciate the, even though the word discipline is a complicated word at times, it is God supplying the, the very need you have in the very moment you need it. And your mind is saying, this is really hard and it's painful, but God has given me this moment to do what I know I need to do in order to move forward. Right. And I thought to myself, I can't do this myself. And I was just so struck by the thing we were just talking about, that God is always with us, always guiding us. And when Gwen says, no, it's an act of discipline, I thought, right, I don't have to do this myself. God will literally give me the ability and the strength to do this thing. 
that's hard in the short term, better in the long term. And I, so I stood up and it was painful. It hurt like crazy. Every part of me hurt. And I was okay with that. Like, it's, it's weird to say, but I just understood. God gave me the ability to think, yes, this is necessary. It's not pleasant, but it's necessary. And God gives us this, the strength and the discipline to do that thing that's necessary. So that's one thing I mean about God being in the process. Mm-hmm. When the you second say, thing, I, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, you go. No, Glenn, when you say that God is in the process, not the outcome, uh, mm-hmm. I understand that God is in the process. I think you explained that beautifully. But when you mm-hmm. say not the outcome, that makes us all a little bit tense or nervous thinking, but I really am praying very specifically for a very specific outcome. Right. And here's the interesting thing. That's why I say God's perfectly fine. It's not that it's wrong to ask that. It's perfectly fine. But if I say, God, please have, I would like outcome X, Y, or Z. God's going to think, okay, cool. I can help you bring that about. The first thing I'm going to do is change you. So even as God moves me towards a certain outcome, and God, like I said, God is all guidance. God's moving us in a certain direction to a really amazing life. So it's not that there isn't an outcome. It's that the way to get to the outcome is to let God be with us in that process. And so I have healed relatively quickly, in part because I really let God be with me in that process. And so we just need to understand that when we ask God to bring about an outcome, God, of course, is willing to, but it will start by shaping us. Because as long as I still have my same fears or same thoughts or same disbeliefs, it's going to be very hard for God to move in towards that outcome. So it's not that the outcome doesn't matter. It's that I have to let God be with me in the process. Am I going to get to that outcome? That makes sense? Mm-hmm, it does. Okay, great. And so then part of God being in the process is I think this to myself a lot, and I say it sometimes to my clients now if I have a deep enough level of trust with them. Oftentimes, if they're going through a hard time, they're going to they'll say something to me, but Glenn, I know it's going to be okay. God is with me. I know it's going to be okay. And like I say, if I have a close enough relationship with them, I'm going to say to them, it's fine to think it's going to be okay. But what's actually true is it's already okay. Say more about that. Well, um, like we say, I'm going to be okay. Like I'm going to be all right. But see, if we just notice what's actually happening to us in the moment and are really aware of God being in that process, we realize, oh, God already right this minute will give me the discipline to get up. Mm. God right this minute will comfort me when I'm feeling scared. God right this minute will give me the calm that it takes me to actually go into that surgery and not be afraid. Like, I can have that right now. All the things I think are going to happen at the outcome about being braver or stronger, I can literally have right now. So when Jesus says in Mark 1, the kingdom of God is at hand. It is that force, that godly force that guides us is always with us, always in us, like right now. So will that force lead us in a direction? Yeah, for sure. But if I, what I notice is, yeah, but just knowing that that force is with me, that God's love is with me, shaping me, moving me, well, that's 98% of the battle. Mm. Yeah, I really, I, I do really like that comment that it's... Um... Not only am I going to be okay, but I'm already okay. That's a very comforting thought. And I, I know there's folks right now that go, oh, I needed to hear that today. Oh, I'm glad. I would, I would love that for that to be true because I just want us all to know. Jesus doesn't say, I will love you if, or I will love you at some point. Jesus says, I love you right now. You are my child right now. Mm-hmm. And I can just come back to that truth, the same truth that started my faith in the first place. Ah, see, my face started the instant I knew I'm loved right now, right this minute. Not sometime, not if, not conditional, not maybe when I'm older. I'm loved by God right now as I am currently constructed, flaws and all. You have so, flaws? Uh, yeah, but I don't, I don't like to talk about them. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that, that would come up. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a little break. Dr. Glenn Pickering is our guest. You can learn more about Glenn at at drglennpickering.com. We're continuing our discussion on finding peace in the storm. If that's your story today or has been this week or so far this month or maybe it's been the last year, you're still looking for peace in the storm. You're not going to want to um, miss any of this. Uh, So if you 
just tuned in, go to the beginning of the podcast. It'll be available later. And as we go to break, I must say that last week was beyond uh, what we were praying for and hoping for because of your incredible generosity uh, during Faith Radio's fall fundraiser. Not only did we have a blast, but you were cheerful givers, and that's what God wants as cheerful givers. And boy, was there some cheerful giving. And we're so appreciative and so amazed at what God did in the lives of uh, so many that gave to Faith Radio. And I pray that is a it's a game changer for you, that God opens up something inside your heart the way he did last week that continues throughout the year. All right, we'll take a short break and be right back with Glenn. Welcome is a word said universally all over the world. Every language on the planet has their own way of making a friendly greeting. At Faith Radio, when we welcome, we really mean it. Learn more about us by requesting a free welcome pack gift. Text the word WELCOME to 877-933-2484 or visit MyFaithRadio.com to request your welcome pack today. And a warm welcome to you. Dr. Glenn Pickering is my guest, Finding Peace in the Storm. God is always with us. God is always guiding us. And God is in the process, not the outcome, but God is most interested in transforming us. Glenn, let's pick up the discussion. This is such a critical point, and I know this is the way God shapes us into the men and women he wants us to be. Great. I love that. And let me set it up by this, by sort of coming back to the God being in the process, not the outcome, which you raised a great question about. Let's say I'm in fourth grade and I go to the, somebody's high school graduation and I'm pretty inspired by the valedictorian speech. And so I pray to God, I say, God, when I graduate, I want to be the valedictorian. God's like, okay, cool. First thing we're going to have to do is change your study habits. <laughs> well, that's not going to happen. But, not, not with me. But what I mean is God's willing to take us to the, destination we're hoping for but right. the way he's going to do it is by shaping us in a way such that we can actually get to that outcome right we have to be open to the fact that god's first step is going to be shaping us so that we can actually have that outcome mm-hmm. so we just which sort of leads us into the um god is most interested in transforming us because i think how can i say our challenges and i gotta tell you this whole process was a big challenge for me and gwen things went back and forth things were really unclear we couldn't always tell from the doctors what the right thing to do was it was a drawn out process until it kind of got to the end it was a challenge i gotta tell you but what i see well not but because that's just true what i see in my life over and over again is those challenges those really hard times in our life if we're open to it can be times of tremendous growth and sanctification. Like, if I was going to be honest, I'd have to tell you that the six times in my life that the most difficult and the six times in my life that produced the most transformation in me were the same six things, if we're open to it. Because, see, a time of challenge just means there's something in our life that's been kind of blocking us from moving forward, and that challenge just reveals that to us. It just makes it clear to us. And so if I'm open to overcoming that challenge, that means I'm willing to overcome something that previously held me back. That's more testing me. When they say God tests us, it's not like God tests us to say we're good enough. God tests us by showing us what our strengths are and what's going well and the places where we get stuck and why we get stuck. Because if we're willing to overcome that challenge, that place where we've always gotten stuck before, see, that will be a huge step in our sanctification. So it says in James 1, starting with verse 2, that testing produces perseverance, and perseverance produces all kinds of character changes in our life. If we're willing to meet that challenge, instead of running away from it, which if we're not careful, we kind of find ways to avoid the challenge. But if we're willing to kind of meet that one head on, what we're going to find is like, wow, there's some growth that came out of that that was really almost shocking as I look back on it. And it's important to understand for all of us, even if we're going through a difficult time, even if we feel like we can't feel God's presence with us right now, that God is with us, God is shaping us, and God is shaping us right now in part by helping us to overcome the challenge that's right in front of us. So if we see it as an obstacle course that will make us stronger by going through it, we're not too far off, I think. I like that. I like the idea of it being an obstacle course 
and that God is di- directing and is interested in transforming us. And Glenn, I think your point's so well taken because when I look back over times in my life when I was crying the loudest and whining the most uh, were also times that God was doing something very pivotal in my life and I was I was not seeing it. But now I look back in my rearview mirror and go, wow, that was uh-huh. an important, important time in my life. And shame on me for, for being negative in the situation. Right. Because it's easy. Our, ego, our human ego goes there because things aren't going the way they quote unquote should go in our mind. <laughs> so then we think, well, that's bad. But honestly, if we're willing to see, you know, this is, it's not bad. It's not good either. It's just a challenge. It's a challenge that will force us to grow and push us forward. And God is always interested in helping us become more and more and more the person that he had in mind from the beginning. So Amen. understand, those challenges are just the way to help us get there. It helps me have a little different mindset about it. Because otherwise, I get kind of, I can feel that down to myself and frustrated with life and wondering where God is. But if I understand that challenge is actually going to help me get past whatever has held me back up until now. It brings a little different mindset to that challenge. And that can help me understand that how God really is with me still, even in that hard time. And that even in that process of overcoming that challenge, God is very much with me. Glenn, how does the story of the wheat and the weeds pertain to this uh, situation? That's a great question. I used to read that story and think that's one of the weirdest stories in the Bible. You know, the master plants the seed, the wheat seed, and then the enemy comes along at nighttime and plants a bunch of weeds there. And the workers notice that, and they say that, you know, they're shocked, and they come to the owner and say, what should we do? Should we tear them all up? And the owner said, no, nah, let them grow together. We'll sort it out at the end, which is kind of a shocking response. But now I really get, our life really is filled with wheat and weeds. There are great things, miraculous miracles happening around us. There are challenges all around us. And it's easy for us to think we know which ones are which. Well, this is terrible. But it honestly might turn out to be the thing that shapes our life in some powerful new way that we couldn't even have foreseen before. And so we know that life is filled with wheat and weeds, but we're not supposed to pull out the weeds because we don't actually know which is which. <laughs> that, so, yeah. Oh, I'm ahead. sorry, continue your thought. No, go. you go. No, that is uh, another point well taken. I mean, there, there's that confusion where we need to be trusting God because of what we are experiencing and what, what we're confused by. And we can, we can trust God when there's a weed and weeds. Right. And I love, I love finding this out a few years ago, that the word that gets translated weeds in our Bibles is actually a specific weed, darnell, which when it breaks ground looks just like wheat. Interesting. I did not know that. I thought that was interesting, too. So we can't sort them out. We just have to trust God is with us. Whatever we're supposed to learn, God help us learn. And um, because even those things that we're sure are weeds might turn out to be the thing that transforms our life if we're willing to rise to that challenge. Mm-hmm. So more and more, when I go through a difficult time, and I'm not, I don't want to pretend I'm perfect at this, but I get better at it. When I'm going through a difficult time, I find myself asking this question, God, if there's a lesson I'm supposed to be learning here, what might that be? I like that. Comment came in from Chris. When you are giving God your storm and your family sees how at peace you are, it brings peace to them too. Right. That's why every blessing of God is a win-win. I swear to you that's true. Couldn't it be more true? Mm Mm-hmm. Every blessing will bless everybody around me. There, there are literally no exceptions to that. Yeah. That's why it says if, you know, the mustard seed grows in this big bush, if you're doing your vision, and that bush will feed even so that even the birds of the field can make nests in its branches. Everything I do that takes my life forward will bless everybody around me. It will always be true. Mm-hmm. So go ahead. Last thing, go ahead. Because I, I was sort of towards the end, so I just want to say this. So the other thing I learned, or sort of relearned, is the incredible and immediate power of prayer, theirs and ours. When I was driving and going to to the surgery, and even when I was going into the operating room, and we could literally feel that there were people praying for us. Like, we didn't just know it as an idea. Like, oh, it's good to know that people are praying. It's like, we we literally felt prayed for. That's beautiful. The power of prayer, power of fellowship and the power of the the body of Christ joining together. Glenn, thank you so much for 
of sharing the very intimate details of what's going on in your life and how you found peace in the storm. I appreciate you very much. Thank you very much for having me. You bet. Dr. Glenn Pickering has been my guest. You can go find out more about him at drglennpickering.com. That's our show for the day. Special thanks to uh, Pastor David Miles and Wyatt for the uh, Monday afternoon mix and Dr. Glenn Pickering for hour two. I hope you have a wonderful evening. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for listening. Programming like this is made available through your support. Information available at myfaithradio.com.